Yes, we are here. We are back for part three. Okay, so <laughs> what was I doing with that? I don't know. Uh, I had lunch. I read Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I'm finally there. I am like going through those books so fast, but I am staying up late reading them. But that is not the point that we are here. We are here for the last part. I was I'm able to do it. Yay. Okay, it, should, it shouldn't take this. This should be the shortest one if I don't ramble like this anymore. So let's keep going here. Okay, this is with the, where are we? The four of coins, here we are. Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom in again, so please bear with me, okay? Okay, here we go, let me lower those a little right there. There we go, okay. So here we are, the four of coins. We have miserliness here, perfect for the four of coins. Too much focus on oneself, on two appearances. Uh, there might have been a different one. I don't know, it has to be. When I see Nar the, the story of narcissists, it's always about pride and uh, ego, I guess, and pretentiousness, I guess you could say as well. Rather than like miserliness and uh, a want for money and like clinging too much to your money but it's also like with this one though you you kind of get that they're really focused on their money but it's more like uh we have to manage manage our money really carefully wisely and we have to know what we're doing with this this one too this one though he's super focused on it so yeah there's there's that moving forward now to the five of pentacles here oh let me move you right there and you Right here, perfect for the Five of Pentacles. Uh, being like left out, being uh, like even some segregation. But with her, you can see that she is, that there's a door open behind her, which she can, which she can go through and escape the winter cold. Uh, here we have these abandoned shoes, which have no use to them or to anyone. Let me see if the Looks like the soles on this one, the bottom of the shoes on this one are all worn out. And here we have these children, beggar children here. Yeah, really well done on all on 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 all the decks right there. For the art. Here we have the six of pentacles, charity, uh, the give giving without uh, expecting something in return, helping others. Here we have this rich lady give, giving those, giving to the poor here. We have this, the somebody giving a turtle here some food. And then here, these are supposed to be like dancers or worshipers, I think. And they are being helped by the, by uh, the bystanders around them. Because I think they like dance like until they're tired and like they collapse and they can't dance anymore or something. I think they dance, I want to say, or they worship. They do something for like a... I think Dionysus or Bacchus, depending on what you like to call them, on the god of wine and celebration. But anyways, seven of coins here. Ah, oh, here she is. Let me find her. I know she's in the Timeless Tarot as one of the cards. I want to say she is, and I know it's, I want to say it's the same person. I think she pops up twice in here. I'm not sure. I'm going to find her though. It's like the same outfit, same everything, but different pose. Uh, and she doesn't have a tambourine. Like, look at that. There she is right there. See, very similar. It like... You can tell that that's her. Let me see. Yeah, that's definitely her. Which is weird. You, which kind of makes you think, like, how do they go through... Like, how do they make paintings? And how many paintings do they make? You know, because these aren't photographs. You know, and like photographs where they say, okay, time to change position, you know, it takes time to make a painting. I want to say maybe the Pinchos du Monde has one. I'm not sure. I'm trying to find the other paint, the, the other image where she shows up in. I don't think she shows up again in the, in, anywhere in the time, in the, in the Pinchos du Monde. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I keep saying it like all confidently, like, yeah, I know how to pronounce it, but really, I, I, I really don't. I don't think anyone really does. Wait, did I pass her? No, that was a different one. Do, 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 do. Looking, looking, looking. Yeah, I don't think she's in the time that the paint shows the mont here. I believe, though, she is. 
Yeah, I think she's, that's the only picture of her that I have. I want to say she might pop up. So I'm not sure. I think she might be in the uh, in the Oracle for the Painters of Mon, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Seven of Pentacles. Uh, I'm trying to think of the meaning of the Seven of Pentacles. But this one, again, the, this one reminds me a lot of that, um, of the Nine of Pentacles, which we'll see right now. Uh, but this one, these two, though, fit it much better, you know, harvesting and growing and investing and reaping what you've sown. <clears throat> Let's see the next one. Eight of pentacles. Wait. Oh, that's the king of coins. What the hell? Oh, I flipped them over. Okay, there we go. Eight of coins. Here we are. Hard work, hard work, hard work. Well, well done, all of them. It's like they're, they are masters at this craft that they do. Two potters, well, not really a potter, but more like they they paint onto the pots and, and everything. They like paint stories and whatnot. Here is a ta here she ma she's making a tapestry here. Oh yes, here we have the nine. All beautiful nine of pentacles. But rather than use falcons or hawks, whatever they use. Uh, they they use parrots here, and this one she she does suit that luxuriousness. She's very opposite of the. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Where is she? Where is it? Yeah, she's much more of an opposite to the five of pentacles. Very similar, even though they're very like there's differences, but they seem a lot alike. You know, they're wintry but summer or spring even, and then there's. Um, poverty and then there's also richness here or being rich the opposite of that uh, so yeah extravagance and all that but yeah they say that uh the the what is it falconeers falconeering or whatever falcon whatever when they train the the hawks and the falcons it's much more of a high class uh practice you know here they're obviously they obviously have parrots instead of hawks so but still, it's the pair, keeping a pet, like that's such an exotic pet back then during this time. You know, it was still costed money. Money that a lot of people don't have. And here we have the Ten of Coins. This one, uh, I said it in, <laughs> in uh, I said it before, I want to say, in, when I did the walkthrough, that this looks very much like the, the Ten of Cups rather than the Ten of Coins. Uh, this one suits the Ten of Coins perfectly because obviously there's a dog. And it looks like there's a large family here. It's more like uh, an in, like because I see it as like an inheritance to several different generations. It's more like looking back and looking towards the future and seeing how they all combine into one and then moving forward. It's one of my favorite cards, I will say. And this one, they all look young and especially the fucking baby. But these two look like the same age. But it's easy to tell that this is like the mother and this is her daughter and. It looks like, hold on, let me make sure. And these are her children, but they are, but she looks, but she seems to be contemplating on the future that they have for themselves and how she's working to better their future. So here we have the page, the devotee and the prince. She, she changed the, uh, the, the gender and the, and, and, the, and the race in the Prince of Coins. And, but that is a subject for a different video, race and different people of color in the tarot. And uh, what is it? Uh, representation of different races in the tarot. Some people can pull it off. Other times it just seems like uh, an unnecessary need of progressiveness. But it's, uh, it's nothing bad. It's just you have to. It's, it needs a separate video for itself. You know, and I do agree that we do need representation. And this card is really beautiful. So, yes. And so we have uh, the a fisher boy, a little fisherman here, and then we have the devotee. What is a what is a devotee doing here? And the and the devotee of coins. What is she doing? Nine, ten. A young woman arranges roses. Okay, she's no one. Oh, for a statue of Venus. Okay, a favorite deity of for household altars. You would think it'd be a uh, Vesta or Hestia, 
Uh, girls offered Venus their toys at womanhood, and everyone at the home prayed for, to her for prosperity, romance, and procreation. A complex goddess, Venus was patroness of promiscuity, and at the same time, her venereal or veneralia, wait, her veneralia, yeah, festival emphasized mortal, morality in sexual conduct. Her devotee intuitively understands the duality in affairs of the heart and pleasures of the body. So again, it is like the, when they say the material world, it's not only just like things, but it's also like in the flesh, kind of, you know. There's a difference between emotional pleasing and carnal pleasing. I guess that's, I, I think that's the correct term, carnal pleasing. Carnal pleasure. Huh. Anyways, yeah. Really do like that. The Tarot Delphi is, <laughs> is amazing. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I forget. So here we have it. Come into the frame here. The hero of coins. He's fighting off a devil <laughs> or a demon. Again, I haven't read anything on the coins. So let me see what he's doing here. Let's do another one. This is going to be a reading here. I like him. He seems, he reminds me of Don Quixote, you know, he, the knight, the man who thought he was a knight. This guy too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they, they both look like that, like Don Quixote, him more than him because he has a horse and everything, but he needs a Sancho Panza. I think that's his name, his friend, his ally. Anyways. Oh wait. Oh my gosh. I've been reading these wrong. It goes devote, devotee, artisan, hero, then Enchantress. <gasps> oh well. Anyways, but again, the heroes look like knights and they're the closest to them, so that's how we're gonna do it. Ah, rest, wrestling with death for the body of El... Oh, it's Hercules, oh, obviously. Heracles, Roman Hercules. Oh, is the quintessential hero, exerting himself to protect others. His rigor is so intense that he defines the not, that he defies Thanatos, or Moors, uh, rest, wrestling with the, the god of death to prevent him from taking a life. Heracles is supremely con competent in his physical prowess uh, to honor what he symbolizes. We're not required to be the biggest or the strongest. Wait, we're not required to be the biggest or the strongest. We simply need to appreciate, to appreciate the body we have and exercise the abilities we possess. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Oh, let me look at him. Let me look at Thanatos. Damn, he's scary. Yeah. <laughs> his eyes are like... If you look closely, like, his eyes are like milky white. I'm not sure if you can see this. Like, look at that. That's scary. <laughs> It's got me shook. Yeah, it's crazy. I really, I really need to go more depth into more depth with the uh, with the Tarot of Delphi. I, I love the art. It looks beautiful. I just look at the pictures, and I read it, and I read some of it sometimes. But I really need to go into the guidebook. And I'm really happy she's making uh, an extended book with it before she reprints it. So, yeah. Now that I see that. Yeah, ooh, What's her name again? JD Hildegard Hinkle. If you're watching this, girl, keep up the good work. <laughs> I'm really excited for her new deck that she's coming out with. I don't. She hasn't. She hasn't put out anything so far. But anyways, here we have the queen. Uh, very down to earth. That's the word that I see. It's perfect for the pentacles because earth is literally in the name. But down to earth, it seems. The same with the king of pentacles here. He is perfect for the King of Pentacles. I like him. He reminds he looks like he could be in the Death Day, mostly because of the turban. But, you know. But yeah, here she she looks like Mother Earth here. She could be in she could have been in the Empress card, but the the Queen of Pentacles could be in the uh in the major the imagery could translate easily between the two cards. Here you have the artisan of coins and the molding and the forming of the, of just plain earth into uh, pots and tools that can be used in many different ways. Let's see. 
I think it's a card of uh, ingenuity, inventiveness, I guess it could be. Kind of like from nothing you made something. You know, from the mud you made clay and you made that. You know, that's, you can just go way off with that. Okay, here we have the Enchanter Sequence, one of the most beautiful cards, obviously. I've never seen this painting before until I've like seen the walkthroughs of this deck. This card is so beautiful. Uh, but that doesn't mean that these two are beautiful as well. Is that George Washington? I'm joking. No, he's probably someone else. <laughs> no, he's probably not. He's, he is, wait, is he? No, he's not. I don't know. He's a king. That's all we know. He's an actual king. I like him. He's, he maybe, who is he? I don't think he's anyone. I'll have to see. I'll have to read the little PDF that, that she emailed us. And that is all. Oh my gosh. Let me zoom back out here. Okay, that was a comparison of all these three decks. Obviously, so let's see the cardstock type. This is obviously the thickest cardstock that I have, that I've ever experienced anywhere. But I think the more I shuffle it, the much more, uh, the much more flexible it becomes. This one is amazing card suck. It's just, I have so many cards in here. Hold on, let me see how it shuffles without um, all the extra cards. Hold on, I gotta take all the Major Arcana cards first because that's where most of the extra cards are. Well, no, there's, there's extra cards sprinkled throughout, but anyways, hold on, I will be right back. Okay, I am now, I have now finished reorganizing this deck. I forgot. I like just took out all the major arcana. I didn't put them back in order because after I finished part one, I just went in, on and just out of relaxation, I just started shuffling all the cards. You know, like even the Tower of Delphi, I had to reorganize. But anyways, uh, I took out uh, these three cards since they are alternate cards, not bonus cards. These three I left in. These five, I should say. The Happy Squirrel, Water, Fire, Air, and Earth. Which you can use as significators, I guess you could say. I want to say... I'm making sure that there's no extra cards in here. Any alternate cards that I left out. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see which other cards am I going to take out. Five, six... There's a seven of ones. I'm going to take out... Ooh, whoa. I almost knocked over my my uh, tigers out right there. Nine, ten, princess, knight, queen, king, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Princess, Knight, Queen, King, Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I'm gonna take this one. I might, and, uh, you, and you can like interchange each one, or if you truly don't like one card, you can keep it out, and you can use it as a practice tester card for, for edges, you know. But it's best to use a good cl clump or chunk of the deck to practice for edges. Let's see, Queen of Swords. Uh, I'm gonna take this one out. She looks more. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Prince, Knight, Queen, King. Okay, there we go. Or maybe I should take out. Well, well, I'm gonna leave it in. Well, I'm gonna leave it out for now because I know it's like. That's a good amount, actually. It make that not all that make really does make a difference. Wait, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Where did the? Oh, okay, there they are. I put them behind the. Uh, I put them weirdly. Here we go. There we go. That's where they go. Ooh. As you can see, I'm already headed towards the 30 minute mark here. Oh wait, no, I'm at the 20 minute mark. Okay, here we go. Again, shuffles nicely. I love how they shuffle nice and sturdy, a little hard, and my hands are big. So here that backfires for me, for these tiny little cards. They are playing card size, but because of the how many cards are in here, how thick the cardstock is, which I love. It shuffles nicely. Here, let me do one more, because, oh my god, I love shuffling these cards. Look at that. Look at how nice that is. Let me see if you can see this. I'm not sure if you can. Come on. I know you can see this. 
But look at that. Well, that's the best we can get. Come on, zoom in. Focus here. Oh, you almost had it. Maybe if I raise my hands and hold it still. Nope, it doesn't want to focus on here. Oh well, that's gonna be the majority of this footage. Me trying to focus in this damn, this damn camera into my, into the cards that I shuffled. It shuffles nicely, that's all I can say. It doesn't, it, it feels like it's not gonna slip and slide out of my hands. And like this one here, it's a nice size as well. It's big enough for my hands and it's short enough though for anyone to start using it. And it does shuffle just as nice. It's just, it's, and it's really, really slippery though. Like, look at how nice that, so that it does. So that it will make a good, oh no, as you can see, it's a little hard to, it doesn't want to like slide too much. It's a little extra when it comes to the slippery slidiness. <clears throat> so it is very uh, similar to the, Mary L here in terms of cardstock. Just a little more flexible because I know if the Mary L was cut down to this size, it'd be impossible to shuffle. It'd be like super thick. It's just that the more card surface that you have, the the easier it is going to be, the thinner it will become. So let's say this was, if this cardstock was used on this, it'd be perfect, I feel. Here we have, of course, the infamous Tarot Delphi with its super thick cardstock. Let me try this with all the extra cards now that we have them here. <laughs> because this is all... Oh yeah, it still shuffles nicely with even all those cards in there if you want to use all the extra cards. Like me. Because I like to use the extra cards. Sometimes you can get... Sometimes you can get different... Uh, tones like like it'll say like like let's say it's like talking you know different tones in your voice you know each card has a different tone but still says the same thing you know kind of like saying good job or hmm, good job you know different tones in the voice they mean it but you know they want a different action out of it so here we have the tarot of delphi again i don't think i yeah, I did not. I'm looking at my male, ma at my male person coming. Male lady? Male woman? Who knows? Anyways, here we are. Now, I will say the Terror of Delphi. Ooh, oh, that was actually a really good shuffle <laughs> for doing it upside down. Usually it's really not as nice. It's really chunky. But this is actually really nice. As you can see, it's got a much more even dispersion of it all, of, of the cards. But let me try it one more time and you're gonna see. If you get this new or whatever, oh yeah, there you can see it was much more chunky. A little more chunky than what I like. And it's very smooth, but then I noticed, I tried something. I remember on Kelly and the Truth and Story, from the Truth and Story, she did a video on uh, showing the, uh, what was it, the Animal Totem Tarot? And so, hold on, let me get, uh, let me re reorganize this because it wasn't an even cut here. There we go, a little more right there, okay. So she did it and she's like, oh, this is, she didn't really, she wasn't a big fan of it. She was okay with it. And she's like, oh, upside down, it works fine. I'm like, wait a second, shuffling upside down. Why didn't I think of that? And I shuffle these cards upside down and they're fucking perfect. Like, look at that. Well, it's pretty much the same now because of how much I've been shuffling it, but it feels, I think like the corners, if I go like this, you can feel a certain like cling and like, I don't know, like something like that, like a cling to your skin, to the skin, on my skin at least. Uh, so let me try this again. Yeah, it works way better like this. A little, it's still chunky and it's still a very, very thick cardstock. You can't, it's, it's really hard to bend like this. All these cards like that, you can, it's, it's really hard to bend them all. These, on the other hand, if you get even just a little bit, eh, it's still hard. Ooh, it's probably because this is, these are both really good card stocks, so. though.
So, yeah. I don't know what else to say now. Hmm. Oh, right, okay. Now, I just said in my, I think in my second video, I said availability, uh, how, how long it'll take to get to you, depending on these two. Okay, so, depending on where you get, this is where the, where the, the tarot Delphi is where most of the variables come in. If you're watching this and it is like 2020, the tarot Delphi might, should be back in print by now. <laughs> by 2020, it should be back in print at the latest. Oh wait, that's four years from now. Wait, no, because it's already 2017. Pretty much, we're in December right now, so. 2017, it's still not here. 2018, it, sh it might, it might be here. Fingers crossed for it to be here. Um, Cause she does want to make a book for it. So yes, there is going to be an extended book for it. But if you are able to find it sooner than that, it's tw and you want to, and you want to buy it though, and you got, and you got the money for it. Cause trust me, if you do find it, ooh, man. The last, this one was like the last new sealed in package, still available in Shrinkcraft and everything anywhere in the world, I want to say, because I scoured everywhere looking for it and, and I was able to find it in Australia of all places in a store. And they were like the ones that like had like the last, and this was their, their last copy. So I'm like, damn. So yeah. I did not want to wait. Okay, now, and that one's that one, but again, it is rare, hard to find, and if you do find it, it's going to be super expensive, at least $100 without shipping, so you gotta think of that too. This one is, is the best investment, I'd say, out of all of them. It has the same amount of beauty, but it's not as in-depth as the Tarot of Delphi. Aesthetically, it's pretty much at the same level uh, as the Tarot of Delphi. Uh, cardstock is, I, I personally, better than the Tarot of Delphi. The Tarot of Delphi is too thick, in my opinion, but now that I've shuffled it like a bunch of times, it's way more flexible. This one though, this one I barely had for almost a week now. It's going on, a, it's going to go on a week in a little bit. So yeah, there is that. Uh, it does take a long time, I will say, depending on how you get it. Uh, if you just buy the Tarot, uh, give it two, give it two weeks, three weeks max, because it's going to be take two weeks to print and get to her, and then she's going to ship it out, and it should take two a week to get to you from her. So yeah, take add two weeks because of printing on that, because she prints on demand. Uh, what else? Hold on, my dogs are like harassing our neighbor's dog. Okay, uh, let me scoot in my chair again. Ah, I wonder, I'm, I'm trying to think of what other video I'll do after this. If I do, no, this is probably going to be the last video for today. Uh, until next week. Until next week. Um, the, what was I going to say? All right. Uh, Pinterest Duman takes a lot longer. Uh, it's, the prices is the same as the Timeless Tarot. Uh, the Timeless Tarot, uh, you can find it on Etsy. You can also get the Pinterest Duman. On Etsy, there's an option there for a box, to get it in a box or just shrink wrapped. The same on her website, Neko Divination. Here, the Timeless Tarot is on Etsy only, and the creator of this deck also made a Lenormand as well. So, yeah. But I have, I saw the Lenormand and I wasn't really, wasn't really interested in it. And also the, I will say, if you already have the Tarot of Delphi, I do recommend checking out the Pinchos the one because she also has, I have them all here, uh, the Lenormand and the Oracle. Look at what I found for them. Look, I got a little, nice little poison box. I want to find another one of these for maybe another Lenormand deck that, that I, that if I ever get another Lenormand deck and it doesn't come with a box like this, uh, because, yeah. This is the the Pinchos de Monde Norman here. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And so you can use this uh, along with the Oracle here for a two voices reading. Now I did, now be careful though, <laughs> depending on how you order, you have to be careful and watchful as to how you ordered the Oracle though. 
uh, with the bundle, it, it, the, the printers might get confused and print you the 52 Oracle card edition, the 52 edition of the Oracle, rather than the uh, 72 card Oracle, which you might want because that is an option here as well. And I messaged her and she's all like, yes, I'll fix it all for you. I think I've told you in the past that in a previous video, I think maybe the first part, when did I say that? Oh no, in the in the actual walkthrough, I, because I, I tried doing an unboxing, but then when I unboxed it, I saw that it was, there was a problem with it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need to stop recording. And, and then I deleted that video. So yeah, I did not upload it at all. I just deleted it off of my camera roll or whatever. But anyways, Moving forward though, this I think you can use the Oracle, this Oracle with the Tarot of Delphi. I feel at least to some extent. It's not as it's not as consistent with the uh, Greek and Roman mythology and all that. It does have a few cards exactly the same like the Siren, but if you get the 72 edition, you can uh, take out a few of the cards and leave in the other ones or something if you want to. So yeah, she has but she also sent me a few extra goodies, or while well, she's going to send me a few extra bonuses with this, with the extra cards that were missing from this deck, which I'm super grateful for. She is so nice, like I, like truly, like great customer service here. Same with the Tarot of Delphi. Like I've emailed her uh, w concerning the the deck, uh, whether she'll email, whether she'll reprint it or not. And she's always replied whenever she could. This her, her uh, Stephanie though, here the for the for the Pinterest demon she though she is much more quick to communicate like within a day or two that's when she'll communicate unless she's like on holiday leave I'm sure I don't know who knows her though she's I think she's much more busy she does have a job outside of tarot so outside of making tarot decks yeah I don't know about the timeless tarot I hadn't had any issues and had no need to contact her. So yeah, I think I messaged her on how long it'll take to get here or something. I think maybe, if not, that was for my Rackham Oracle, which I ordered as well from there. So yeah, I'm so, oh my gosh. I might be, I might be selling this or I might be giving it away. I might be doing a giveaway or trading with it. So mention it down below if you would like this deck because I love these two. And this one, I'm kind of falling out of love with it. I barely look at it now because thanks to the Pinchos du Monde, there's flaws with it that I can't overlook. It is a beautiful deck, I will say. It's nice, it has it's a good size, but I just don't really use it. And I did say to myself, I'm not gonna get rid of any more decks. So I might not in the end. I'll make it official, who knows? I'll think about it. So yeah, this is already at the 30 minute mark. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been the comparison between the Tarot of Delphi, the Pinchos du Monde, and the Timeless Tarot. So, yes. Shop wisely, I will say, when looking for these beautiful decks. So, so yes, I will see you guys next time. I think my next video will be a walkthrough of one of the decks that... Uh, Oh my gosh, who was it? Natalie sent me. You saw my unboxing of it. All those decks, they will be unboxed eventually. I think the next one I'm going to do is the Russian Gypsy fortune telling cards. So yes, that will be really fun. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.